Have you ever wondered why I have these stream VODs on my YouTube channel? You're probably thinking. Well, I wish I could download VODs just like this Okasan did. Well, never fear, I'll be going to teach you how to download a VOD so that you can upload it elsewhere. But first things first, a little introduction. Hello, my name is Double Moon, you can call me Agatsu. I first started streaming on this platform since the 1st of August, and despite the hurdles on the very first one, I was stunned not only it allows for uninterrupted streaming from the get-go, it also allows me to bring my own emotes for followers to use. And of course, the ability to present VODs after streams and many more. Since checking out the VODs, I've, been, been, I've since been investing my time and effort to determine what works and what's beneficial for others so that they can also learn from their experience. A little side note here. Despite some technical knowledge about these streams backend, like what works on RTMP and how VODs are being structured with Fastly, I am in no way associated with VStream and its staff. But I admit I applaud them for what they do to make this whole thing possible. With out of the way, let's begin the tutorial. Now, you may have wondered why out of the threads in the questions topic channel, this question is among the most active despite having resolved. That's because I'm mostly active on there with all the suggestions, ideas, repositories, and shenanigans that I posted on there. I figured I'd turn them to a tutorial video so that everyone can follow along and download the VODs for themselves. Most of the steps I'll be demonstrating on here is included in the documentation at github.com slash the slash vstream dash VOD dash download. Now, usually when you're downloading a VOD and you're a Windows user, you'll expect that you'll be downloading from within Windows, right? Let's demonstrate right here. For this demonstration, we'll be using the zip file option. Now, first things first. Go to my GitHub repository shown here. On the table of contents, click Installing on Windows. Under the zip file heading, click on this link and will download the zip file to your downloads folder. Before we go any further, I would like to emphasize that while I curated the zip file myself, I implore you to execute the files at your own risk. Here's what you need to do to verify if this zip file is the file you downloaded. First things first, copy paste the provided md5 and sha256 hashes here in this documentation to your favorite text editor. In this case, Notepad. In your command prompt, go to the downloads folder and dir your zip file. Alternatively, locate your file in File Explorer, press F4, select All, type CMD, and press Enter. Type in serp util dash hash file, then your zip file, which in case it's yt dash dlp dot zip, and md5. Repeat the same process but with SHA256. Now, copy paste them to your text editor and do a visual inspection of them. If they match, then you're good to go. Otherwise, re-download the same file and repeat the process. If in case the hash file is raw after multiple tries, contact it directly on Discord or through email. Now that you have your zip file ready to go, it's important to note that with this option, you'll need to ensure that you have the Python libraries ready beforehand. You can install Python through python.org slash downloads slash windows. FFmpeg is already included in the zip file. To determine what Python version you are using, on a command line to python dash dash version. YTDLP requires Python 3.7 or higher, so keep that in mind. Once Python is installed and has met the dependency requirements, unzip the file to any directory you want. In this case, we'll put it in the downloads folder. Now go back to the repository and click the code button, the green button. Click download zip, unzip, and go to the directory. For file integrity purposes, open command prompt and do cert util dash hash file, then a file you want to execute, then md5 and sha256. Check the file checksums in the readme for the signatures. Natively, there's a mismatch within the signatures caused by the creation date due to GitHub's handling of downloaded files. If that happens, verify its code by opening them through a text editor. Once they have been validated, since we're in the zip file option, Copy dlt-vstream-windows-min.bat to your working directory. It's natively executable, so you can execute it straight away. Before proceeding to the next step, make sure you already have the VOD that you want to download copied onto your clipboard. Now that you have the vstream URL, go back to your working directory and execute the batch file in the root directory. Follow the on-screen instructions, then wait a bit. Okay, see? That's why it got stuck here. 
and most of my windows testing this doesn't work so any of you guys have tested this option please let me know Anyway, another option would be the GitHub releases option with the steps in the documentation. But instead of min, just the full variant of the bash file. Uh, with that failed, I switched over to the Linux land, where it's proven to work for me. Specifically, the Debian side. But we're doing a little bit differently here. Since we're on the most recent version of Windows, let's welcome WSL Windows Subsystem for Linux. Visit learn.microsoft.com slash windows slash WSL slash about to learn more. I have an existing distribution installed here, mainstream Ubuntu, so I prepared another distribution before making this video. Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. It's Debian based, so it will be easy having to navigate through the steps indicated in this documentation. For starters, make sure you have YTDLP, FFmpeg, and Python 3 installed via the APT Repackage Manager. For other options, refer to the documentation. To install the packages, refresh the list first via sudo, then type sudo apt get y install yt dlp ffmpeg python 3. Wait for the installation to finish. Next, prepare a working directory. Type mkdir then any directory name you want. For this, uh, we're gonna be go with restring vots. Next, clone the repository using git. If you don't have it, type in su sudo apt-get-y dash dash install git. In my case, it's already installed and it is up to date so we can continue the next step. Next, do git clone um, https colon double slash github.com slash double up. Robinson, this is my username, slash vstream dash for dash download dot git and wait for it to finish it should take long as each scripts are a few bytes long now cd to the clone repository and ls to find the file you want in this case we'll do the dbn since we've installed the libraries with the apt package manager for file integrity purposes do md5 sum and sh8 to 56 sum of the file you want to check for signatures then compare it with an act with a text editor when validated copy your working directory with cp and note that this is this command isn't what you think in a negative light. Blame the Linux devs for that. Then cd to your working directory. Now, before arming your script, make sure that your script is executable. Do chmod plus x, then the script. Then ls to see if the script is green. Because green in ls is executable. Now that you're ready to download some VODs with this environment, with the VOD you are under the clipboard, do dot slash then your script. Follow the instructions and wait for it to finish. Okay, so a little update here on this uh, on this whole operation. UIT DLP does require Python 3 because uh, I just had to make this little correction on camera. UIT DLP requires Python 3 and at the same time the latest distribution, at least LTS distribution of Ubuntu. For those who have been in Ubuntu side, make sure that you're not below 2204 LTS or um, Jammy Jellyfish. So here we've been changing to Debian, which is the main framework behind Ubuntu. So we're using the native Debian here, still on WSL. Now we've already got a lot of these things, um, Control K or Control L apparently. So I've made some little bit of a, some changes. I'll implement them on the repository right after this video. So let's go ahead and uh, do period slash dl vstream dbn.sh and enter vstream url here which is this one and enter a file name to save to 2023-0801 because that's the very first file that I have on my channel so let's take a look at what this means it will download parts of the video first as m3u8 and then when it completes it'll compile inside the software and present you with the result in an mkv format now when that's done FFmpeg kicks in, debuxing your file to mp4. Since it's in verbose mode, it'll show you detailed information on how it's done. After debuxing, the script auto-deletes the mkv files represented with the mkv mp4 file to avoid confusion. Now, by this point, vStreamers like me who are utilizing the native Linux environment can go ahead and view the file using their default video player. But since it's WSL, we'll have more steps before we can check the video out. From your working directory, do mv asterisk dot mp4 slash 
mnt slash c slash users slash your username slash any directory you want forward slash for my case it will be the downloads folder for easier reference now before we get to the username slash directory uh moving phase let us determine first what is your username so let's summon command prompt here and type who am i uh this will determine what your pc name and your username was so this in case it will be this our username i will not spell it out here i will not say it out loud here because the guys can already see it this is a shared pc so <laughs> anyway let's do our profile and then the downloads folder slash in my default wsl distribution which is ubuntu I've already had the self script set to move to the exported bots to the videos folder and that only applies to my op own operations. So this is just the demonstration how it's done on your client level, it is in case it is on your level. Assuming you have WSL as I have. And don't forget the slash at the end because there's a tendency it will be rendered as a single file. It will be overwritten when there are multiple files. So if you don't plan on adding the slash at the end, ensure that the directory exists beforehand. Now let's go ahead and move it and just wait for a few minutes or a few seconds depending on your video length. Now you can take a look at the exported VOD natively and upload it to YouTube or elsewhere of your choice. Well, let's take a look at the VOD first before we could even call it a win. So as you can see, it's now done. We have the video, the vod itself, and now we can upload it to YouTube and elsewhere. All of the other steps, factors to consider, FAQs, and other info are in the readme, so go check them out. So I hope this tutorial will help you in downloading your vods using a preferred environment. And if in case you need more help, shoot me a DM over on Discord at the development, mention me on the VStream server. Or send me an email at jlsa14018 at gmail.com. And that concludes the video. Hi, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you in any way. Don't forget, I do VTubing and stuff mainly on Twitch and VStream and post stuff over on Twitter slash X. State of the VTuber community every end of the month, but it's pilot episode this end of August 2023 on VStream, so go check them out. Writing streams every Monday, Thursday, and Friday in their subject to change. Once again, this has been I got you, your precious Okasam, and I'll see you in the next vod. Bye bye.